Alrighty, let's get this show on the road. Finally back after a few weeks away, one owned Dakota, two Google's conference season in Toastmasters. So with that out of the way, we can finally ease back into things. So I am Cup of Team 001, aka The Senate, and we're going to do some live tutorials and AMAs for a little bit before we get ready to go into a new city. The reason for why that is, is that I see across the streets a lot of questions about land use. So that's how the land is used by the urban form and the transport system and all the different ways to do it. So it's going to be a multi-part series and music's louder than me. That's because it was set for Mass Effect. Try that. How does that work? Sorry, that was set for Mass Effect, which is very quiet. Right, let's just put on something a little bit more. There we go, let's try that. Yeah, in fact, I'm going to drop it back a little bit more. So as I was saying, we're going to be doing a multi-part tutorial AMA series on some more advanced play of City Skylines and the different systems that are placed both in urban form and transport form. So part one will be the overview. So a very high level overview of what's known in my profession as spatial planning. That is using, um, that's influencing behavior through spatial form, so how the city is laid out, and using spatial form to influence behavior. AKA, one, how do you get around the city? Two, how do you interact with the city? Part two onwards, we're going to look at transport. So we start with bus and tram. Part three will be metro metro and heavy rail part four is freight and part five we'll be looking at active modes and hubs and of course i'll be writing this all down and this will obviously the highlights and that will get uploaded so again The overview of the city. So the city is made up ostensibly of four components. The environment, the urban form, the infrastructure, and which in this case we're just looking at transport infrastructure, so I won't be covering power, water, parks, and so on. And then the people because the city could be seen as the apex of our civilization. Um, the, that comes from the social cohesion we have as a pack species, like cats and dogs and wolves and so on. Because if we weren't, cities would literally fly apart. But cities are bound by unspoken rules and unspoken conventions that have existed since the foundation of the city thousands of years ago. 
So this is my current city, Neo South Auckland. It's an older city and it's a more established city. And the reason why I'm going to use an older city is that it's easier to show the infrastructure and the urban form place rather than having to lay it out new and having to start from scratch with a new city. But don't worry, there's still a uh, lot of expansion to do. For example, because this is highly congested at the moment, I need to bring down a new road here to here so that these guys bypass and do not end up in here congesting that up. Because as you can see at the moment, it's pretty congested. So we will be doing expansion. Uh, of course, we've got to bring another link into here, which is going to link into here as well. And of course, we've got the expansion through here as I've started setting up. You can start to see I'm starting to lay out the transport ready to go. So major, a new major sense is going to establish here. For example, whereas an established one would be here, here, uh, not so much there, here because that's the city center. And this one's a little bit more dispersed because it's the airport, but also here. Now I need to change that round. And I'm probably going to make that a raised station later on. So we're going to take a quick pause. Have I? Oh no, have they all been taken out? Ooh, they might be all currently taken out or they've been moved. Metro. Oh, I do have heavy rail. Yeah. So I do have it available, preferably with not park and rides, although it's not going to be an absolute pet peeve. Uh, is that going to work? Yes, it will. In fact, I could do... Um, oh. got to be very careful how I do that. In fact, if anything, it would probably be a... Yeah, it'll probably be... Yeah, it'll be that. And just bypass it right now. I just need to do some um, rejigging. Probably move the thermal... St the geothermal plant. Which is fine. That doesn't bother me. It just gets moved. So you're going to see an ex uh, uh, some retrofitting later on. So let's continue with the overview. So as I said, this is an established city of about 155,000. We do have mods currently in play at the moment. So the big ones are being transport line. So it's zonal, not disasters. Transport line manager. We have real time in effect, which simulates the day and night cycle. So the simulation slows down quite a bit. We've got realistic population in effect, and then we've got some other stuff for quality of life, life for its things like industry and connections. So as mentioned earlier, we're gonna have a look at the overview. So you've got the environment, the urban form itself, the infrastructure, and the people so the way i usually do it so this is left-hand traffic for starters so if you want to know so there they all are left-hand traffic because that's how we drive and so on and that just reminds me again no it doesn't need tolling but that should probably be tolled So we're now going to look at my style of play. So left-hand traffic, modded, real-time is in effect, which is one of the biggest differences. And I do, so urban form-wise, I do what's called the, um, 
me just check what I which model I use. I've actually got it on got it on picture. If you give me a, a moment, I'll actually be able to show you. So I follow a very specific urban model. So this is the so the model I follow is this one what's called the composite model this doesn't exist and never has with cities once the cities were live so um this can happen on a, a dispersed model um this can happen with more design design led cities capitals are typically like this Funnily enough, most cities, including my home city of Auckland, will follow this model, the composite model. So you've got your city centre, but you've also got other centres floating around. Now they could be industrial centres, heavy industry, or they can be what's called in Auckland a metropolitan centre, to which we've got 10. And these metropolitan centres are one down from the city centre and act as sub-regional hubs. But the differences between the monocentric model where everything's flowing into the city center and the dispersed polycentric model where everything's going everywhere is that your major activity is still in the city center but you also have moderate to major activity that could be either part of or independent of the city center itself as you can see with these arrows for example and of course your densities are affected change accordingly so this would be Auckland this would be Monaco, Kapikura, Berlin, Henderson, Newmarket, Westgate, Albany and Sylvia Park would be over here so I've just named off the 10 city the city center and the 10 metros in Auckland so this is the model I follow and this is also called the island effect so this is the continent item on. So this is what I follow in City Skylines. So if we look at it here, and it's not the largest city I've done, the largest city's been half a million. There's the city centre. So it's downtown. Here's a major industrial complex. Here's another one. And here's another one. And then you've got minor smaller ones dispersed all over the place, like over here, over here, to support the city centre. And I believe no, I took that one out. Because that wasn't working. And a smaller one over here to support the airport. Warehouses logistics. Hey, you guys are gonna come in from Amazon somewhere. Am I right? And then of course the airport in itself is a complex. And typically so are your seaports so um, there's another center sort of here 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 technically here again the airport here and here but not here 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 here, 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 and here. So you'll also notice with each of the centers, same with the city center, they'll usually be backed up by interchanges and often quite large interchanges. So the city center itself has heavy rail, metro on the ground at the moment, tram and bus and technically because the downtown's nearby trolley bus as well oh and helicopter but we leave helicopters out of this i just do it for um wankery status more than anything else so major transport centers here move along follow the metro line not really one here but a major one here metro bus 
Uh, no intercity, I believe, with this one. Major shopping centre. And then the residential to surround it. Come this way, because it's not metro related, and we've got another one. Bus. Shopping centre, major residential, and even an airstrip. Now... I'll be covering this in parts two and three. Rickerton and Papakura are connected in two different ways. And I'll be covering this in the respective parts. Papakura is connected by a busway. Leading to Rickerton itself. And also to a degree um, up to the junction here which leads out to Papatoitoi. And technically to the city centre whereas Rickerton is connected by Metro so just a preview into parts 2 and 3 the three ways to connect up your, all your centres heavy rail or monorail they both work the same way Metro bus or tram so in this case it is the, I chose the Metro and bus way to connect up all my centers heavy rail is used for intercity and freight only and trams are there for when the buses and the busways get overwhelmed well again another center basically carbon copy this is where the city was first founded so another one here but this time with an intercity station and if we drop down to here Another one here, partial, no, sorry, that was not it. One here, my, my most recent one. Ooh, aircraft. This time we've got a hub in place. Intercity Metro, but also... Let me just find it. Nope, they don't have it. So it's just um, buses go around elsewhere. I think it's actually along here that the bus is picked over. Let me just get my orientation settings. Ah, yep. Sorry, buses are over here. And as you can see, we're quite busy. And what's going on here? Just give me a second. We are needing to do some maintenance. TMP, please. Hmm. Oh, no. Just give it a minute. Oh, I know what's going on. Hang on a second, team. that's causing the issues. Now here they are. I need to get rid of these cycle paths. Because these glitch out so badly and cause... Um, I need to replace them. Yep, there we go. Now I'll just shoot back over. As you can see, and again, part of the OBI, a lot of pedestrians on the move. So I'm re very reliant now on my respective modes. You never ever rely on a single mode, whether that be a single transit mode or just roads with private traffic. Just go and ask Slay BB over with Atlanta on how well that works, i.e. it doesn't. Or just walk onto my home for a map for that moment. Especially when you're doing interchanges. So yes, we use the um, the model where the city centre is in play, but you've also got other major centres floating around, backed up by, of course, your minor centres. So that's the method of style I like to play. Infrastructure-wise, I use what is called 
the infrastructure surplus model. So you've got the deficit model and the surplus model. And currently, I've got some two good examples of the surplus model currently, and actually three examples of the surplus model in effect. Two are transit, one is a road. So the deficit model works on that you basically put down your urban form, your zones, put down your zones you put down your roads for your private traffic and trucks and then you forget about your transit for the next 30 years familiar story yes no yes and that often means a lot of expensive retrofitting because the urban form is already in place on top of culture change you try and undo 30 years of behavior tell you what it ain't easy and you get a lot of resistance the surplus model which japan and hawaii are quite famous for is the infrastructure goes down first then the urban before the first resident or the first business comes in and we have that currently in three places you can see that i have laid down a metro station You can see the metro line and a bus road currently unconnected not connected up to the main road ready to go ready to be turned on when i connect it all up and ready to receive the first residents and businesses when i build out this connection through here that's one example that's a minor example a more major example would be down here so this is a big this is minerals and oil so you need so once upon a time this little village with some corner stores and that would have supported both but as more industry and more workers move in we need more houses you need more houses you need more supermarkets post offices commercial civic infrastructure so we are preparing for that as you can see metro station and a bus and the city bus hub which is currently operational so we're already receiving into city buses and that the buses will service this new um, center as it was in here named south auckland heights or the metro will connect up to I think it's connecting up to yep connects up to the main line so that will pull into um, either Waitakere station although that's pretty busy as it as it is at the moment And this is where I miss Metro Overhaul mod. Or I can get on and it will connect further up to Papatai. So the infrastructure is ready to go before I place down the first zone. So that's two transit examples. The roading example, and you're probably going to see it, is I have set up an interchange, a road. It's actually an expressway and an offshoot from a roundabout ready to go actually there's four examples it's for when i expand there's another example up here as i've built this connection into henderson papakura because at the moment to get to here you have to go all the way around and then skip back across which is interfering with traffic down here so that just gives another connection out especially for freight and that connects back up to the motorway uh, motorway there now i am probably going to look at bringing another connection in here to feed it into here otherwise you although this is technically a highway so it doesn't matter 
So those are four examples of using infrastructure surplus. Again, the urban islands uh, use the urban island model. And if we look at the districts, you can see how the districts are all laid out. Now, not every piece of urban area is filled. Some of it will become parks, forestry. Now, I use zoning rather than plopping, although that actually, no, I, 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 let me correct that statement. I use a hybrid. You can tell why Tuckery is designed to be um, a major. In fact, I'm going to change that out. So I just had to do a quick change up. Cities are living organisms, so things change and evolve constantly. So I do high road. Zoning is the primary way I lay down the city, so I use my zones. which are then controlled by the districts. So I do use district specialities. But that's telling me I'm gonna need a new leisure area sooner rather than later. In fact, the new leisure area is gonna go down in here. District highlighting is on so I can see what is what. So the urban form again is controlled by my district policies, which then are further controlled through city policies, services. So what I'm running now is pretty much standard down the line. Each some districts will have specific um, policies enabled, like city centre will always be education boost. Technically, I don't have blimps flying at the moment, but whatever. Not in this city anyway. Taxation. Oh. Downtown I have not. Let go of leisure. Whoops, I usually have that enabled. Typically that's the only one I use. City planning. Yes, we've got electric cars. Is that city-wide? It is city-wide. Woohoo! This one's a bit of a dud, so eh, whatever. And then themes. So again, I use theme manager to control the spatial form. More to the point, the aesthetics. So the main ones I use is these, and then I'll do these from time to time. So I use international, use Europe, European, and then from time to time I'll do the Kiwi stuff, which I do actually have enabled at the moment. In Henderson, I believe. Yes, I do. So if you want to have a look what that is. Good old-fashioned Kiwi houses. Of course, most of these are not um, detailed, so that's been left to me to do. But if I was ever a detailer like Slay was, hey, that works. So that's the uh, so that's on the zonal side. The other side is I do have Rico installed, and I will go for a bit of a plot. Typically, it's done in the city centre, or if I need something specific. So, for example, that is Rico. No, I disabled that. That is Rico, and so on, and so on, and so on. 
So I do hybrid. So I do plopping and zoning, depending on what is required. I think the universities are currently maxed out, aren't they? Yeah, I need to build another university. Which is going to be over here. So that's on the spatial form. And of course, this is always determined by... Yay, here. Transport. Big one. And I'm actually going to come over here. Um, no. I'll come over to... Sorry, the... I think the city centre might be the best illustration because it's got the most in it. Yeah. Transport. Learn this line well. Learn this phrase well. Land use begets transport. Transport begets land use. Both beget the user experience of the size of the city. What does that mean? Land use will determine how people are going to behave with transport. If you have a lot of low density sprawl from one end of the map to the other, your transport, your transit system is not going to work. There's just not enough density to sustain it. So you're going to have wide roads and people driving everywhere and lots of parking. Whereas if you have a more higher density landform, transit is viable because there's the mass. Your roads can be narrower because it's the less need for cars and um, you just have higher amenities where people can either walk, cycle, take transit to where they get around. Now with transport that doesn't mean splurge on every sodding transit solution under the sun. of the main ones maybe four and yeah just work with it so primarily I do bus tram metro <coughs> as the main <coughs> excuse me as the main three um, I have done with heavy rail but it's pointless because you need to separate it away from the intercity traffic so that's a fruitless endeavour. And I have done monorail in the past. Monorail is interesting. It has the benefits of Metro through the fact that it is... That it is elevated above the road. I think it's here at the moment. It's a hub. Let's see if I can find it. You can hub it up. Must be placed road, so bugger. Um, give me a second, let me just slap down a road. Ooh, I've got new roads. That's always good. Let me just slap down a road. You've got the benefits of hubbing. So in this case, bus metro. So a good way to do feeder from your buses to go out on monorail and you could do it on metro as well so i've used these before so your intercity comes in on these and then you've got the complementary metro and monorail depending on what you want to do and i have used both in tandem the only um problem is they are the noisiest so they keep them away from your residential areas team 
as for their speed limits now heavy rail has unlimited these guys are restricted to 100 and as you can tell rail ha heavy rail has unlimited behind it so yeah you just need to um, update your speeds accordingly so I have used Metro and rather ironically when I sorry monorail and when I have used monorail it's often my most my most profitable system which is ironic so maybe the Simpsons joke was a joke after all because hey I've always managed to get monorails working but as I was saying with your transit system pick three so one two three or uh, one two three or one or no technically these two are actually the same so one two three or two three and then of course you've got your novelty things like trolley buses uh, taxis cable cars helicopters and um, oh, well, I've not placed this down yet. Yeah. And of course, I've never really used this. Yeah, so pick your three and run with it. Because each transit mode has different optimum range, different capacity factors, and uh, different technically uses for example for example and I'm gonna delve in more of this in their respective parts buses are great short range so they are known as feeders they feed into the major lines like metro and monorail or heavy rail so they're great as feeders and the reason for that is, is their capacity so as you see here is a good example you can see I have got some feeder buses feeding into this metro station over here go into the more heavier part of town feeder buses feeding into the metro and also to an intercity station and again here and that's because your buses although they can take the most have the lowest capacity the biggest bus I've got is a 180 double as a 150 bendy boy As I said, there is an exception to that rule. You can extend the life, uh, the service of your buses by using busways. As I've got here. So we've got, I, for the second time ever in the seven years I've owned the game, I built a bus rapid transit system. Connecting between Papakura, Rickerton, and partially to Nelson, uh, partially to, um, well that is actually part of Nelson and then carrying on to the city centre or to Papatoi, depending which way you go. Your next one is the tram, the trusty old tram. Now, trams, as I mentioned very much earlier, I lug the same as buses, because virtually they are the same, with a couple of differences. Capacity. I think my biggest tram at the moment is 480 passengers. Remember, my bus maxed out at 150. So that's the first one, it's capacity. The second one is amenity value. Look at this. Um, look at this. Uh, <coughs> look at this. This is on grass compared to great wadding 
Sea of Ashvelt as seen here with the bus wave. You've got that. Or that. And technically, if I was to drop down even further, that. So, capacity and amenity. Otherwise, the range is technically the same as a bus. So, um, the maximum I usually take buses up to is 5 kilometers in this game. And Transport Line Manager tells me this. Trams is typically... I do have a very long one and no, I do have a long one in this case they typically are about the same but you can push them up to that range typically going beyond that range though you should be hitting see if I can find the big one Oh, so that's tram. Sorry, not that was tram. Woohoo! No, yeah. Sorry, that was tram. Yeah, tram max is out at about same as the bus, five six kilometers. And then metro basically is unlimited in there. So which brings me to metro. Metro, like heavy rail, high volume, long distance connections. Now, and city skylines are going to either be at street level, underground, or above ground. Technically, above ground is cheaper. But when you're running into a high environment, like high density environment, like city center, you can drop it. And again, unlimited range. Capacity, I've got 800. I think this one isn't 800, by the way. It's a London set. See how big he is. No, it's only at 180. 900. So my biggest metro is 900 passengers every three minutes. Heavy rail maxes out at 800. Monorail maxes out at 360. But again... Metro is hoped for short distance, great on long distance. Buses are great for short distances, hopeless at long distance, although you can extend them with a busway, and tram sits in the middle. So that's the tra transit overview. Now, one thing I did have not mentioned, and it's technically because it's not in control of you, apart from the infrastructure you can provide, is cycling and walking walking as we saw sims will walk a certain distance and bike slightly further so how are your pedestrian and cycling connections as you can see a lot of these guys are walking they are walking from here across the bridge And then either to the buses or the metro. They're not having to drive. You'll notice this, I don't do park and rides except for very rare circumstances. Typically if it is a, a rural environment. But look at all these people. They are walking. They are also biking. So are you providing cycle lanes? Are you providing shared paths? I'll just pop over. Are you providing... And let me just go to one. So we're just going to go for a slight flight. Here they are. Are you providing on-road protected cycle lanes? And are you providing, once I get to it, let's 
just going for a slight fly. Plus weight. And off path cycle waves. Because again, people might walk with cycle to this bus way. So how are those links all linked up? It's very well laying down a transit line. But how are those connections walked up? A lot of people forget cycling and walking. Walking, walking. <coughs> Make sure you have those active mode connections used because believe me, they use them. But uh, have I got a good. But I should probably do a few more across these rivers to cut down time. So this hasn't been a big priority in this particular city. So. I think this is an example, though I don't think many are using it at the moment because it's night time in the game so fair enough they'll walk and there's a subway station right there so how are those links all linking up everything with urban form and infrastructure and it doesn't need to be complex. What you see here is a mature city that I continue to expand on. Is it complex? Yes, it is. I'm not going to lie about that. Does it need to be complex? Well, the bigger it is, the more intricate the organism becomes. However, it's also very simple. Jumanji, is that no... Which audio? My microphone or... Music. one can't we hear because OBS is telling me the mic is fine yep and we're fr and we have no lag we're at full power anyway as I was saying yes the city isn't is a complex organism but it's also the beauty can be in its simplicity as well none of what i've done with the transit system is overtly complex because it's built upon each other and they all link together given the model i used which was um let's go and get it again composite model what is complex though is the planning that goes in beforehand and for those that have watched me stream to watch my highlights that's particularly odd Twitch being Twitch. I know it happened last night on the stream I was modding. So where the complexity comes about is planning beforehand. Those that have watched me over the last few years, whether it was vlog, 
Yeah, Twitch being Twitch. Uh, whether it's vlog or my videos or Twitch, is that it takes me, a, it takes you see me trying to map everything out. But once it's laid down and you start building upon it, and providing you've got your strategic transport network in place, the example of strategic transport is the motorway, the big 12 laners, the rail lines, the rest just naturally falls into place. The people will usually guide, people and industry will guide you on where they want to go. And then you just subtly influence through your zoning and your transport where you want it to go. Now then, we're going to jump down to the roading network a little bit. And this is good because this has actually got it. When most people do cities, they usually start out with bus, as you should, and one form of rail. You shouldn't be doing trams until your city centre is fully established, so you'll be probably looking at metro or heavy. Or monorail if you're ambitious. But at the end, I've always managed to get monorail turning in profit. So maybe I should run the Springfield monorail line. Who knows? Now it's all hunky dory, slapping down a road of whatever size, slapping down some bus routes, like so. Selecting your buses that you want, and the frequency, and the fares, and hit and go. But you're going to find it, you're going to run into a small problem. Congestion from general traffic, as we have right here. And boy, this intersection is an absolute dog's ass. Now the reason why it's a dog's ass is because of the land use. We've got three competing land uses in the area and the immediate proximity generating three different sets of demand. We've got industry which is generating freight, which serv ironically services all the retail and commercial in the, in the city centre nearby. We've got, of course, the downtown and the city centre itself. Now, with downtown, it's a leisure area. What's leisure, you ask? Specialised in leisure activities, with nightlife and many more alternative of daylight. So commercial zones are active 24-7. So we're not doing 9-5 to in the offices. We're 24-7. Fun fact, my transit system is often bu the busiest on a Wednesday night at 3 a.m. in the, 3 in the morning in the downtown than it is on 8 o'clock in the morning when everyone's trying to trudge off to work after the weekend. What the shit? Oh, yay. Welcome to a 24-7 economy. But you've got the commercial and the downtown forming another competing land use. And then you've got the residential, of course, the people living nearby. So this is a little bit unique. And so what's going on is we've got residential trying to get into here and into here. We have got freight trying to go through here, here, and here. Well, raw goods are also trying to come in by rail. We've also got the downtown basically pulling everyone in. So, because we've got three different competing activities, which is extremely unusual, typically you only have two. But in this case, we've got three. So, this is a good example. Our traffic can be the definition of an absolute shit show. And it. Let me just put it. Let me put it in the actual mode of what it is, because real time is on. It's night time, team. It's night time in the city. It's nearly one o'clock in the morning, and my traffic in downtown on a Saturday. Oh. Well, that speaks for itself as an absolute crap shoe. Competing land uses, competing activities are in effect. Fastest way to muck up your transport system.
This guy's gonna stare to get me yeets. So when this uh, happens, you've now got to start looking at your infrastructure more closely. Because a general road ain't gonna cut it. And prior to this trolley bus system being detoured out this way, it used to go through this intersection. And boy, did the trolley buses get backed up pretty badly. So this is where what we call priority measures come in. And this is particularly pertinent to buses and trams. And when I talk about buses, I also mean trolley buses. So in city skylines, vanilla or modern as I do, priority measures come into effect. Now what are priority measures, you're asking me? The basic overview of the priority measure is it gives priority of one mode over another. Typically that will be either transit or freight. Freight is pretty rare because if your freight's getting backed up, that's telling you you need rail. Straight off the bat. But buses and trams, we can prioritise them out. Now, for buses, it's done one of two ways. We can use the on-grade on bus lane. As you can see, the buses are using it here. No other traffic apart from emergency service vehicles use it. The buses have a smooth run through. Okay, is there a bus in the area? In fact, we do. Which way is he going? And I'll show you how a bus, bus lane works. Because you've got bus lane, bus right of way, uh, which includes full blown busways. So let's see where this guy's going. So he's on a bus lane. Straight run. We've got congestion. actually in a general lane at the moment. We've, he's just jumped over to the bus lane. So that's telling me. I just actually, before I even do that, is that the only bus route there is? Yes, it is. As you can see, we've got congestion in the general lanes, but he's able to use the bus lane to get around them. Now he's in general traffic again. And will continue to be so until he gets out the other side. Now, you can see when you don't have an asset available, you can make your own. And this is basically using TMP and what have I just done? the line marking tool. So you can create your own bus lanes. Now let's see if we. Excuse <coughs> me. Let's see if we can find another bus to see it working at a very heavy intersection. I suppose I'm going to have none, aren't, am I? Alright. We'll just follow him. He's going to use the bus lanes anyway. So let's follow why it is where we've got bus priority measures in place. Doesn't mean they always use it, but it's available if they do. Um, the emergency services can use it too, so often they will which means they can also skip by general traffic. So again, he's on the bus lane. 
So we'll watch him do the circuit, and you'll see how the priority measures are in place. And then we'll do it for trams. Ah! Get out of the way. Now here we are, we have a dedicated bus road only. So technically this is a busway. Again, skipping general traffic. So you got now two forms of priority in place. And I'm going to cover this more in depth in the, in the next, um, over, uh, next part. General traffic. We're in a leisure area, uh, tourism area. So you also notice the cycle lanes in effect. Which gives the cyclists a way to get around unimpeded, typically. Except when they do that. So we'll get him whipping back along. So he's returning to the city centre. Again, the bike lanes are there. I love using roundabouts because they are overpowered in this game by miles, but they keep the traffic moving. Not needing to use the bus lanes. Again, a bus only road one way this time. Metro Intercity is the bus station. I should not be skipping across that. Here we are. Again, people walking and cycling to get around. We've got sunset coming soon. Rush hour. Uh, no, no rush hour. It's Sunday. Here we go back out again using the bus lanes. Keeping it away from this time, freight traffic. Now, the way I've got um, transport line managers set up, if there's a passenger on the bus or train that comes to a stop that doesn't need to be picked up or drop off, the bus skips it. So you're not having empty buses piling behind you. They can bypass and run again, as it just did. Save. Now heading back the way we came. No, he's doing a Ah, this is a big trip. This is a more bigger trip. So now you can see the modes coming together. the walking you can 
was a sick adjustment in effect. I bet this is the second busiest station apart from the city centre itself. Tells me enough. That's the second busiest metro station in all of the city. Now I'm just going to take a slight pause here. Gonna do a quick run with the Rico. It's not going to do much actually, but hopefully better than something. Alright, where were we? Again, the modes all connecting together. So this time we've got cycling and walking. You can see the urban form as green as the eco mode. Don't mind the trees. This is a Dutch road, so parking, shared, bikes, parking. I won't bet you also have to take an overview on the noise, so it's quite noisy in my headphones. Back out we go. You see the active modes all in use. Now you can see the city centre in the back. Now we've got a problem of congestion. What's going on here?
there now you've got a classic case of congestion now interfering. Now this is going to be fun to watch them try and negotiate this. So this is now a case of what happens when your priorities are not set up properly. Oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, this is going to be... Now you know why you're going to want... That bus should have technically moved the lanes, but whatever. see the consequences of competing land uses and the transport system not set up to deal with it. Oh, there's been a huge amount of rail goods being dumped. Everyone's getting their Saturday morning deliveries. Bus priority measures now in place. And uh, that will continue on as it goes around the corner. But as you can see here, that is the consequences when things don't line up properly. So that is a good sage lesson right there, because nothing is just moving up here. In fact, if anything, I should be forcing these guys to go around the corner. Are we having a lot of trains dumping? We are.
that's half the problem because we've got all the freight movies which i will be covering in part four looking at freight networks It eventually gets moving, I would have been all the morning deliveries piling up. But again, as I said, let that be a lesson for when you don't have your transport and land use lined up properly. So that is a form of bus priority measures arc. Now the other form of bus priority measures is, once I get it, now I'm just going to make sure he's going to go down the right line. Yes, he is. So the other one is when you don't use bus lanes, is you can use grade separated. Now you can even build a full-blown off-road um, busway. Or you can build an in-road, and I'll show an in-road vision. I don't, haven't done an, oh... I got off -road, you saw an off-road version earlier, and that would have been... Double Vs. Although, this, in most cases, they would be two ways, so that would be... Let's go find it. Here. You can also use them as high-speed links as well. But let's look at... Another form of bus priority that I do have in the city. Again, look how heavily congested the area is and see how the busway cuts time down. It's Saturday morning, so everyone is out and about. Let's wait for the lights to go green. We're on the busway. Notice how the general roads are congested, but the busway is able to move things very efficiently. This is using the ride transport assets, so in this particular instance, and these have been customised by me using the line marking tool, and so on. But notice they're not competing with general traffic. And this is one way of extending your bus reach beyond the normal five kilometers. Just note, once your buses cap out, max out, you're gonna have to go to trans, which we're gonna do next. See the helicopters in effect. They're always fun to ride. And you can see the supporting land use all sides. Most of it's high density. Going underneath the metro. No, we're not going under the metro line. We're now going up a busway road into the major interchange. That is the metro to our left. A metro train. Oh, just mind the bumps. We are now at the interchange. There's the metro station. This is a 
custom made Mustang. So Rickerton is bus and metro. As you can see, very lively paces, all supported by high density residential commercial. So you will see blue, green, and red on the road. Blue is for pedestrian crossing at a signalised intersection. Green is for cycle lanes, and red is for bus lanes. Which follows the standard ISO. Get a bus stop. Wait. Again, the bus is just flying on by. And now we're back on to Akrae bus lanes on the 12 lane of my What we're coming into is what's called now a bus priority box. It's not a whole bus lane as a whole. What it is, is it allows the buses to take priority at an intersection to get out of the blocks. Just the lights are green, so they're just going to cruise straight on through, and then we're into the view of the cage. This one is intercity, heavy rail, um, standard buses, and metro rail. That's the priority measures. As you can see, it's a very busy, extremely busy road. The bus priority measures is keep those keep those cars moving. 
Alright, keep those clusters and keep moving. Next one is tram. So the tram is basically a basically high capacity version of the bus. So we'll sit on the three gear and we'll look at act grade and separation. So this is act grade. Cycle lane, general lane, general lane, flexible tram, parking, green space. Trams often just uh, often the location just get higher mid today than buses are. This is a European system, so and that quieter as well. Okay, so they're gonna change up there. And there's a metro as well. So I've got to come off the interchange and down here to catch the trams. Urban and North, medium density, deep side. This is the European thing. It's one of the three things I think. The third side. Now, this will get to the city centre, so this will get to the city centre. Now, the presence of general lanes can be hit and there to find the next time. Looks like a bus. So this is good for low volume environments. Now this is actually on bus, this is on bus uh, tram priority. So general lanes to each side, and trams to take the middle, but it's not great separations as such. Cars could still technically interfere. But this is a cheap solution where you don't need full separation. separating me between that and the general traffic and the white line. But I still like the busways, in road busways, I can still do it pretty effectively even if the road's jammed. We are now on a fully separated tramway. So cycle lane, bus lane, general bus lane. Separated tram, runs to the peak up the other side. This is a big 12 lane range. The university to one side, city centre in here. But you can still get fouled up at intersections. We are waiting on the lights in the light metro, which is just cruising on by. Again, separated. One is cycle lane, two lane road, separated tram, uh, got some repeat, and then we've got a one lane and then multi transit. Notice there's no train, 
tram stations as such, they just stop. The great thing about trams is you can put grass underneath them. It's great for the environment and stormwater. We're in the civic district now, the government civic district. One time. This has got more, so we're in the city centre now. So another part of the other view is going to car free. So I've had typically thrown the cars out of parts of the city centre. Not in this car though. Okay, so it is totally car free. You just gotta make sure you're walking and um, transit are in good nick to support it. Now we're on a dedicated tramway. Maybe we're actually going to the airport. Pop soda. This is a dedicated tramway. It's totally separated out. At the Forest Foundation, we care about three things. So Tree below things, me is the metro things, station and the, the third thing, bird things. The homes of native birds are being destroyed and the bird is raised. Yeah, I'll ride the airport. That's why our goal is to get a birdhouse to every bird on Earth. Humans stopped living in trees ages ago. It's time we invited birds indoors with the rest of us. Do your part and text Dirty Birdie to 3030 to donate uh, a bird house to 30 birds. You can either be part of the or you can be with us. The Forest Foundation. That was good to know. We're heading to the airport. Um, the stream's running fine. Everything's showing fine on my end. It could be an encoding issue. Try refresh, uh, Pixie. Yeah, Twitch is there to pal. We had it, I had it last night on the stream. Just hit refresh. Going to the airport, and the reason why we're in the airport is we're showing a station, which is rare for trams, but. Ah, okay, I'll have the video up tomorrow, and I'll see what's going on with that. This is a tram station as such, and this is connected to the airport. So it's one of the very few. And so that's why you use pri priority measures in place. We've seen issues where, uh, cases where it works and cases where it does not work very well. Uh, I don't think there's a train in there, but let's see if I can get one coming out. As it, um, also with Urban Form, I'm not the biggest user of Parking is such, I'll do it. We'll do it in some instances like the airport. So that has another impact on your urban form. When parking's bound to generate congestion, the airport certainly does. But it's quiet at the moment. Uh, probably because it's coming in at night time. And then finally, to show what full grade separation. going the other way. I do, so we'll just have to skip. 
these are the benefits of showing full grade separation. Straight out of here, sorry. So this is what full grade separation allows. I am not interfered by the traffic at all. Benefits of grade separation support sort of the highest density of traffic. Uh, sorry, highest density of urban form and um, not have to worry about traffic at all. So you're not going to run into congestion issues unless you start to overcrowd your own services. That's the biggest one there. That's 900 that train holds. Largest of all my public services that I've got. It's also a good thing about Metro um, elevators again, this is a pretty nice view to see. That said, Best views, and now we'll just do we'll look at a novelty form of transport. Let's see if I can find one. So we'll have a quick look at the novelty. The helicopter, we well, could use clubs, but they're much bigger. This is a great way of seeing the urban. So this guy's going to go to the airport. Great way of seeing the city from up high. Find the tower. Doesn't do anything to your transit, mind you, although I can always max up the helicopters. I actually need bigger helicopters. So you can't really get too much better. But it does give an absolute nice view of the city. Photos and all that. basically ride to the airport and then we'll ride the one out to Tapatura and then we'll leave them tonight and that gives a basic overview of what I do with cities and some of the basic outlines and then we start digging deeper down into it. So part two which will be on Thursday we'll be looking at the buses and trams, part three which will be next week we'll be at metro, heavy rail, monorail, part four is we'll be at freight, part five we'll be looking at active and pub Part 6 will look at the urban form itself in which I'll be starting in the city. Because that's the best way to show it out. So, uh, we'll use the existing city for um, up to part 5. Part 6 will be starting a new city. So I've got a new map on it. Probably one thing you would have noticed is all these high tension power lines. One thing I like to try and keep with realism is, in this case, with the power lines. So going from the big 800s right down to the 12, um, 12 kV. And he's standing at the airport. No matter all the craziness out there in the world, oh, where the most attractive is this? Sit inside in a nice and peaceful, and listen to music and talk to the good people. I hope you're having a nice day too. Don't.
touch that dial. Now, where is that other helicopter? Ride him out and then I will suck up. Out we go. So this time we swing over to the right. I think we're coming into daytime as well. Extra of urban forms again, more low density stuff coming through. So we're smacking the high density to approach some sensors. Just a note, international gives you the big high rises, European gives you the low and mid rises. You can see the second busway there. And also the extra. we go there so that's so i will always put in a novelty whether it's the cable car helicopter or blimps is going to have something typically will be the aerial ones because um they just look good and the fact that use it to turn back to base and we've got one going out Halfway, this is always fun to deal with. You can usually tell if they're stuck by the amount of buses stuck behind or trains stuck behind them. TMPA. There we go. There's a busway bus. Another busway bus. Another busway bus. Another busway bus. All busway buses. Uh, just had a give you a quick demonstration of a, what a feeder bus is. So this is a circular bus that works its way around Papa Curry to feed into um, the transit lines. Uh, this is a, what we call a 
jackable sides. And you see how, how the beta squirts in. And how fucking your feet is put up so. Now, typically for beta buses, there's not usually way much of bus priority. Traffic volume for two days is warranted. Might get some bus priority at intersections, but otherwise not needed. General lanes are definitely enough. But if the roads do stop, you can start retrofitting bus lanes quickly because they're very cheap. So in this case, we use our active lights, uh, bus uh, cycle lights. And this is where I start paying attention more to it. Yes, even your feeder buses can get busy. And I've had to upgrade the amount of buses I use to hear more than once. Honestly, this is approaching tram level. And maxed out. Hi, I'm Greg, owner and founder of Steel Frame Spies. Due to unusually short fingers, oh, which are a characteristic of my family line, I was unable to play spots at the elite level I would have liked to. Instead, I invested my energy into Not getting you all. the lowest prices possible on athletic gear. Unlike the local sports team, you can count on us every year. I fight every day to get you the best deals. I'll never drop Still the ball on out. prices, and that's because low prices and my by the short passive, fingers mentioned earlier in the advertisement. One. Just remember, when the game's on the line, who do you count on? Steel frame spots. That, that's who. Uh, uh, check out our ad in the Weekly Nickel. <laughs> it's Super Salmon Days down at Fish Brothers. For a limited time, bring in any fish and get a child salmon entree free. You heard right. Bring in any fish and get a free child salmon entree. And I mean any fish. Got a swordfish lying around? Bring it in. Got a goldfish you're sick of feeding? Bring it in. Got a fish that's been sitting in the sun for a few days? Bring, bring it, it in. in. And then we'll back to the demo. In with the rest of them. Seafood themed restaurant where everything's a great catch. So that is an example of how a very short fast speeder works and how gently it can make that up to max them out. As I said, that bus has been upgraded three times from a 30 to a 90 to a 120. Your deep stress is a good pal, Earl. Not that much more than these are 135 maximum, so. As I said, I'll have to look at which is that one there. about these quieter feeders is you get to see a uh, more classic maybe at least. Also very green as well. Tell you what, these have coolness. Rip the front property, so that'll cost you back, cost you back by one and a bit million. Low density doesn't support transit that well, so you know, low capacity buses will be best here, maybe a medium attack. I think this is a 70 seater that I've got currently at the moment. 
seven doesn't even need to fresh come up there. Setting tray. And there's an event on today as well at the Aquatic Centre. The theme over here, we have one and lost two. Okay, so an event coming up, which is our um, trigger free transit. But in any case, in summary, with the overview, the city's made up of its environment, urban form, its transport, and its people, and they're all intrinsically linked together. Cities can come in a variety of ways, whether it's monocentric, polycentric, or composite model, which is the model I use, is where you have city centre backed up with major centres dispersed all over the region, and the way the flow of goods and people between those centres and the city centre, but between the centres themselves, with the metropolitan centres that we've brought in here. And then with the transport, of course you've got your road, your freight, your transit, and your active boats. And you've got to remember each one deals with something specifically. Buses are good for short distances, so they can be extended by busway. When they get overrun, tram. Metro and heavy rail for long distances. They can be great separated. They get expensive. And with, and this, uh, with heavy rail, you also get the difference between the city and freight. Do you put the infrastructure in ahead of time or after the fact, leading to expensive retrofit? And most of all, what do you want your city to look like? That's the big one. Do you want a low rise? rise? Do you want a mixture of both? What industry do you want? What districts do you want? All part of the overview of the city. All intrins intrinsically linked, all part of a very complex, very complex beast, but it need not be either. It could be equally as simple as one line. It's these. A 
And at the end of the day, the things you do are going to influence on how both your city is built Sunny Breeze with me, Earl Gibb. Don't and how the people dial. behave and how both influence each other. So on Thursday, I'll be d covering this, finish this overview, and I'll get this cut up and chopped up and sent up into YouTube. On Thursday, we will be looking Thursday we'll be looking at buses and trams. Next week is metro and heavy rail. Great. And then the week after we'll be looking at active modes, hubs, and then starting a new city after that. So we will see everyone on Thursday. It is good to be back. Glad conference season is no, I've changed already. Come on. Glad contest season is over that takes a lot of your time. I've been at quarter of the commands too. And so yeah, we will see everyone on Thursday. In the meantime, take care and it is good to be back.